Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Cloak and Dagger, Season 1, Episode 1, First Light. So this show came out in 2018 on Freeform, and is based off the Marvel characters, and no, it's not part of the MCU. This is when Marvel was still branching out to other networks and stuff. And it lasted for two seasons and it had positive reviews and some pretty good ratings and the stars of the show was getting like nominated for stuff. But sadly, it got canceled after two seasons. Once Disney started like, you know, shutting down other shows from like other networks because they just wanted everything to be on Disney Plus. However, this show is not on Disney Plus. Still to this day, you can't watch it. You can only watch it on Hulu. And this show was really good, really deep, really emotional, um, very gritty. It did things that the MCU Marvel shows on Disney Plus would never do, which is what made it so much more realer. Basically, think of this show as Smallville, but no villain of the week and no costumes, but much darker and much emotional. Sadly, though, this differed from the comic books in a lot of different ways, which probably irritated a lot of fans. And, you know, I understand that. Personally, for me, I enjoyed this show, but I could have used some action, which this show has none of. Only, in, only one episode per season has like real hand-to-hand -hand combat type action and stuff. Every other episode is just a drama. It's a drama, romance, emotional show. I'll do a season rundown breakthrough um, breakdown um, later, but for now, I just want to cover the first episode and stuff. And so it stars that of Olivia Holt and that of Aubrey um, Joseph. After the show wrapped, Olivia said she was going to take a break from acting. Boy, she wasn't kidding. She took a year-long break. <laughs> but now she's in a brand new show. And so she was actually my favorite character in this whole thing. And so I have to give it up to the way they created this show. The cinematography, the way it was written, the way it was directed, the way it was acted. It had a very beautiful, organic, poetic feel to it the soundtrack was amazing um the way they portrayed certain like characters they did an amalgamation of certain characters which you know bruce tim did a lot so if you're gonna get mad about them doing this you gotta get mad at him for doing that so it's all right you know what i'm saying they still told their story in a very cohesive type way and they tell their stories completely different than the format of the baby humor of like the Disney plus Marvel shows. I appreciate the Marvel like Disney plus shows for like having costumes and trying to be comic saccharine and stuff, but they're too goofy and childish and their format is too stagnant. But you know, it is what it is. And you know, I really enjoyed this show, but it's not perfect by no means. I just really wish they had action. So anyway, this episode, it starts off with a little girl named Tandy Bowen. And she is a little ballerina. She's teeny tiny in there thing. And she's waiting for her dad to like get off work. He works at a company called Roxon. And she is, I, I love how they show that this is a, t a different time era when she's little because she has a teeny tiny flip phone like back in the day. And she's very polite. She's well spoken. Like her mannerisms are like very mature for a little girl. And so her daddy is really rich and stuff. And so she's waiting for him. And then they're driving in the car. It cuts from that. And we get to see Tyrone, known as Ty, Tyrone Johnson. He's a little kid from the hood and he's wearing a black hoodie. And so like his family is dirt poor and his brother is a troublemaker, always getting in trouble, stealing stuff. Well, his brother, Billy, who's an amalgamation of his friend, Billy, from the comics who got murdered and his older brother from the comics, they merged those two together. Um, 
so it can have a deeper connection to it. He's hanging out with some of his friends who are no good. And basically what happened is somebody stole from Billy and his friends a car radio. So Billy friends want to like jack it back. But Billy doesn't want to do that. He just wants to hang out with his brother and keep his brother out of harm's way. Well, his brother Ty decides, you know what? I can be a baller too. So he decides he's going to hijack the car. He literally breaks into it with like a... Um, clothes hanger and he re-steals the radio back it's raining it's pouring his brother catches him and tells him you know what we're gonna return this thing back but then there's a problem the cops um saw what happened when little billy not a little bit when little ty was like breaking into it so they hightail it on out of there and so they're getting chased like around some type of dock area next thing you know um, back in the car with Tandy and her father, they're enjoying the ride until a giant explosion happened from like many miles away across like the sea uh, where Tandy's father worked at, at Robson, that Robson company. It explodes. The blast radius is so huge, it goes across the sea to the dock um, and to the streets and it knocks. Um, Tandy's dad's like you know focus off to where the car busts through the barricade and goes deep down in the ocean for Ty and his brother as the cops got their guns drawn on them which is ridiculous now one thing I like about this show it shows black awareness but it doesn't beat you over the head with it kind of like Falcon and the Winter Soldier did they, they get their point through by showing it through imagery and you get the point and stuff and like um, social justice, but not the way the MCU does it. Sometimes they just beat you over the head with it. And so like the explosion, like vibration, um, when it went off, it knocked the cop, the cop off his balance and he fired his gun. It go, he shoots like two rounds into Billy's chest and Billy falls into the ocean. And it's not like, see, the cops had no business pulling a gun on like two black kids, but it's, um, but he didn't do it intentionally and, but he still did it nevertheless. And so Ty jumps into the water to save his brother. Now the cop, we find out later that after this happened, instead of just confessing to what happened, he covers it up by contacting his uncle. So his little shady behind is gonna get his sooner or later. So Ty is in the water. He's swimming to find his brother. His brother is like lifeless in the water because he has sadly died. And so Ty tries to go back to the surface, but he went too far under and too far out. And now he's trapped underneath a giant boat and he is about to lose oxygen. Over with Tandy, water is starting to bust through her car. She is desperately trying to like, you know, get out the car. And next thing you know, this weird like energy wave hits both Tandy and that of Tyrone in different locations of the water. And this is how they gain their superpowers. Because this is actually, like I said, a comic book show. It just doesn't always feel like it. And so it gives them their abilities and their powers. Now it's completely different in the comics. In the comics, a drug dealer injects them with some type of drug and gives them their powers. And it turns out they're actually mutants or mutates. But of course, they can't use the term mutants in this show because of the Fox deal. And so, like I said, it is different from the comic. So next thing you know, Tyrone can see a light energy source from far away distance. Something is glowing white. He has no idea what it is. Next thing you know, it cuts from that and it goes back to the car. And we see a hand slowly going down into the water near uh, going down into the car because like the roof part is off and it's like smoke all around the hand and there's like a um it's trying to grab tandy's hand it's tyrone and there's smoke coming from his hand like fog like mystical smoke we don't know exactly what's going on and then so she's reaching her hand out to him as this light source is still glowing 
and it's a and it's all in the water and then they lock hands it's a very beautiful way they filmed that and not only that but ella uh ellie golding um her song dead in the water is playing and it's just like beautiful it's like watching poetry in motion when you see this scene it's really like uplifting and like emotional and like touching like you can feel like what's going on in the screen and the next thing you know it cuts from that and then it's 10 years later and stuff now in terms of flashbacks um when using their powers we get to see what happened to them after they locked hands somehow they got teleported to a beach ty is completely knocked out and so is that of tandy but she wakes up first and when she wakes up she steals the hoodie of tyrone and because she's cold now and leaves him there but he's gonna be cold too <laughs> but he has at least a um, long sleeve shirt on but still she stole his hoodie but she's freezing and she just like wanders off and this starts her path of being a thief and when he wakes up she's no longer there but he's looking around and there's certain things from inside the car he don't know how he got to the beach and but he finds one, um her ballet slippers there's um, one hanging from the um, tree and he decides to take her ballet slippers. So they kept the momentum for each other, but they don't know. Um, but he don't even know what she looks like, but she knows what he looks like. Then we go 10 years later and now they're both teenagers. Their life has completely and utter change from that night. Now it is the reverse. Now, instead of being poor and living in the hood, Tyrone and his family are rich and they are living it up and he is now a basketball player at a prep school and stuff but he is also now an angry kid because he's still mourning the loss of his brother all these years later and it's affecting like the way he played basketball to him showing up late and stuff like that Tandy on the other hand went from being rich to dirt poor living in like you know the hood and stuff and tandy and her mother are both now alcoholics and drug users and stuff we see tandy and multiple people in the show doing lines of chalk yes in a marvel show they're doing lines of chalk and we see tandy do it um as a teenager in the first episode this is how gritty this show went. You will never see a Marvel show do that. Also, I'm getting tired of TV shows glamorizing drugs. Every time you see somebody doing a hard drug, they're a female on the show. I, don't, I know females, they do drugs, but still. Have you ever seen a drug dealer or a drug user? They look pretty hit. <laughs> They're not pretty pretty, <laughs> but yet on TV shows, they're as glamorous as they can be and as hot as can be. And I don't understand that. <laughs> In real life, drug users don't look that good. <laughs> no offense, drug users, but you know. <laughs> and so Tandy, you know, she helps take care of her mom her mom is a like 40 something year old waitress but you know what i'm getting tired of television shows making fun of older women who are waitresses at diners and restaurants like what is that like you know what i'm saying so anyway she is a grifter a thief she is constantly stealing from folks basically because she's so hot she uses her feminine wiles to lure on um, men and sometimes older men and like you know st and steal from them basically she has a friend who works at a um dry cleaner place and he supplies her with like really sexy outfits as long as she pays him so her and her boyfriend her boyfriend is a really nice guy but he's a grifter too and so like she dresses all sexy she slinks around and she catches the eye of a rich like teen or a rich older man so in a way when they take her back to like a hotel or their place and they start like doing like drugs and 
all making out and stuff. What she does is she roofies them. She spikes their drinks and then she steals like all their valuables and everything. And then she takes it and she sells it for tons and tons and tons of money. Her hustle game is strong, but boy, she went down a dark path. And you gotta give it up to the creator of this show. They went a very dark route for Marvel. Something you will never see the MCU do, which is what I complained about in my last video about the MCU Marvel shows versus like the other shows. Go watch that. Because, you know, the other shows that are not Marvel MCU shows, they had style. But Marvel does not. And so, like, this is how this girl makes her living. And, you know, she's stupid enough to tell the guys, hey, you know, I just spiked your drink and I steal from rich people. Why are you going to tell the person that? You know what I'm saying? So things that she steal are like jewelry, money, and whatever tickets they have to whatever fancy thing they're going to. She happens to steal um, tickets to a ballet recital and stuff. She still loves ballet, but she no longer does it. And so as for Ty... He is a basketball player and the star of like his team. However, he's been neglecting his responsibilities when it comes to practice and stuff. And I just hit my camera. <laughs> and not only that, but like I say, he is an angry team. And he fights with the other team member, like punching them and stuff like that to where he gets in trouble big time. And when he gets in trouble, the whole team gets in trouble and they don't take too kindly to that. His parents like reprimand him and you know keep asking him what's going on, but he just doesn't want to say. Now, since the explosion from when they were kids, they have not used their powers since because they forgot they have powers and their powers have not manifested yet. And so, like, um, I can't remember if their power is activated when they met or if it activated like before then. But I'm pretty sure it's when they met, it's when it happened. So anyway, one day Tyrone is at like a little like party type thing outside with a bunch of his other like classmates. Tandy, who does not go to that school, in fact, I don't even think she goes to school. What she likes to do is that when she's not stealing from people, She's hanging out with her boyfriend and she's like, you know, um, staying at like a rundown, like abandoned church, a cathedral type thing, um, a Catholic looking church. And so she doesn't like hanging out with her mom that much because her mom also does drugs as well. And so like, um, also, her mom keeps bringing home these random dudes. And she brought home a new random guy. Let me get into that first before I get into the party. So, um, no, I shall get into that later because something else comes up. I'll get to the party. I'll get to the party. So, Tyrone and his girl, they're at the party and stuff. And so he, well, Tandy bumps into him and spills her alcoholic drink all over him, which he gets in trouble for. His parents think he's now drinking. <laughs> so anyway, he wasn't dumb enough to get the smell out. <laughs> so anyways, she's talking him up and everything and they're having a pretty cool conversation, but they don't remember each other and she doesn't remember him. And so they're talking and they're talking and then later on she leaves. And so like... When he goes back to talk to his girl, she wants like something to eat or something. So he's going to pay for it. Only thing is Tandy stole his wallet. <laughs> when he sees her talking to another guy, he chases her down. Boy, she is scared pissless. <laughs> and everything. She is taking off running and she is scared and he ain't letting up. He wants his wallet back. <laughs> And so they're just like, he's just chasing her down. And then like, he finally is able to catch up with her. But when he grabs her, uh, I think like by the hand, 
something happens. Their powers reactivate for the first time since they were kids. And it's almost like a burst of energy explosion between those two. And it knocks them both on their feet. And so, like, when they come to, they don't know what the heck has happened. But then she just keeps looking at him. And she's seeing smoke, like, coming from, like, his hand. And, like, her hands are glowing and stuff. And now she remembers from what she saw that night when she was underwater. And she's like, it's you, you that kid that saved me and everything. And he's all like, you know, what did you do to me and stuff like that and all this other crap. And so, like, you know, um, she uses her powers again. Because, see, what happened is when she was running... Oh, no, that's how her powers activated. My bad. When she was running, she was so scared that her powers activated and her hand started glowing. So then when he grabbed her hand, that's when the explosion happened. And then so, um, still scared, like her powers are coming out whether she wants them to or not. And a huge flash of light comes that blinds him and she's able to make her escape. So, um with him later on in the episode like he's so distraught from what happens he goes to sleep and when he goes to sleep in his room he puts like his sheet over him which is a dark black sheet when he puts it over him and he goes to sleep he now has woken up in like i think like either outside or like um on a rooftop or somewhere and he has no idea how he teleported from one place to another. It's the same thing that happened when they was kids and during the explosion. And so as he's like, you know, trying to like come to and cover himself up. Because I think he's naked by now because he went to sleep naked. And so or at least in his underwear or something. He sees a man talking on the phone and the man's getting into a green car. This man has a huge scar on his face. He recognizes that man. It's the same cop that shot him, um, his brother like all those years ago. Somehow something has teleported him to that cop. Why? We don't know yet. And so he makes his way back home. And so now he knows the cop that killed his brother is still around town. They live in Louisiana, by the way. The show decided to put them there for whatever reason. But they, I think they live in New York in the comics. And because pretty much every Marvel hero does and stuff and so like anyways with him he is starting to get into it with his teammates now i'm not sure this happens in episode one or two because i've been watching that re-watching the on the series so i might explain a little bit from what happened in episode two basically his teammates are not happy with him showing up late so they just, and him fighting other members of the other team getting them in trouble when he shows up late um, because he, he's been now spying on that cop a lot now. And he is angry to the point where he wants to hurt that cop. And so because of him constantly spying, he's now late for practice. And they and the team has to run a bunch of laps. Tons of them and stuff. And so his teammates, his white teammates, have decided they're going to inflict a little justice on him. And beat him up in the locker room. As he's down on the ground um he sees like a black um sheet or whatever and he covers himself up in it like a garbage bag and he teleports again away from like the bullies he has no idea how he teleported the bully should have known that hey where he went <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's never um question and stuff he is constantly teleporting when he's upset sleeping at night it only happens when he puts like something over him like a dark sheet he has no idea this is happening, but he's starting to figure it out. And so, like, like I said before, he's constantly spying on that cop. And, like, you know, he's constantly using his powers when he doesn't even know he's doing it. It mostly happens when he's unconscious or about to fall asleep or, like, whatever. And so, with Tandy, she has decided to go to that ballet recital thing. And but she doesn't want to sit in the audience around everybody else. She just wants to be in the Raptors by herself and just look at the life that she almost had. You know, it really upsets her that she no longer has her father. It really upsets her that she's poor. It really upsets her um, that her mother is like the way she is. 
and it really upsets her she's no longer a ballerina well when she's leaving the place three guys jump her and one of the guys is the dude she drove from early in the episode he's all like see i told you she was going to use my ticket to go to this place they take her to a back alley she is scared out of her mind and they just have her up against like a wall or a gate or something like that and then so the one dude instructs the other two dudes to leave he is about to assault her and everything like literally pulling down his pants and everything and kissing her against her will she is so scared like she has no idea what's going on but she just like thrust her hand in his stomach turns out when she pulls away there is a white dagger in her hand and it's made of like a light construct he is stabbed and bleeding like crazy she has no idea how this dagger got in her hand but it disappears very soon it is part of her powers um her powers have the ability to make like daggers this is why she's called dagger in the comics and so like she eye tells it because she's scared and everything she tells her boyfriend what happened that she was almost assaulted um that she stabbed him with some type of knife type thing and he doesn't understand like where she got like a knife from and she doesn't know either but she now knows that because he's rich um he's gonna go to the police if he wakes up and id her because he knows exactly who she is and stuff but if he dies then of course she committed murder so she's scared so what does she do she wants to get out of the city but she needs like new id and stuff and so like hold on just one second that was weird so anyway um sorry i had to look out my window i heard like a weird noise out there i don't know where it came from so anyway probably a squirrel or something or my neighbor who knows but anyway um so like she needs to get out of town and fast you know what i'm saying because if they catch her and they probably gonna link her to a bunch of other like thefts that she's done and so like her brother takes her back to not brother, but her boyfriend takes her to the dude from the um the dry cleaner place he tells her give me 11 grand and i'll get you out of town and i can get you a new id and everything like that and passport or like social security whatever she don't have that kind of money even though she grips and still she ain't got that kind of money and so her boyfriend's all like look i can get up five grand and everything but um it's gonna take us a while to get the rest back so she heads home to get the rest of her money that she has and this is when her mother and her mother's new boyfriend pisses her off her mother and her mother's boyfriend who's a lawyer her, her, her boyfriend's a lawyer are doing lines of chalk Whose line of chalk? They're doing tandies. <laughs> they stole her stash. <laughs> she is pissed <laughs> that they stole her stash <laughs> and everything. And she berates them both. Her mother's boyfriend is literally wearing a pink robe, a tiny one and everything. And Tandy is not too pleased by all this stuff. And so like, um, what is it so she just berates the crap out of them right and the mother's all like don't you talk to my boyfriend like that taking the boyfriend's side over the daughter i hate when parents do that especially female ones and so tandy's all like ah he just wants like um some booty and everything like that and he doesn't really like you and he's a married man and all this other crap and so next thing you know she goes to find her money her mother used it and everything. Tandy is even more pissed that her mother stole her cash. I hate low down parents, man, that do crap like that. So out, um, out pissed off as she is, she just leaves. And then when she heads back to like, you know, the, um, her boyfriend and the um, dry cleaner dude, she's all like, look. She overhears some people talk. Well, she overhears a man talking, actually. She overhears a man talking, and he start 
dropping down hundred dollar bills because he has a very swanky wedding he has to go to so she now knows how she's gonna get that money she tells the laundry dude that look five grand as a down payment and i will get you to rest by the night but me and my boyfriend need to borrow some outfits and stuff and so what do they do they crash the wedding and she teaches her boyfriend how to grift from like all these rich people taking like the envelopes of cash um sweet talking people getting to know them bumping into them and stealing from them and stuff like that and that's what they do but while she's there she's really like upset and stuff um but they do hightail it on out of there and so like um i don't know if it was this episode or the next but at some point um ty is looking to dish out some justice when it comes to that police officer in the form of a baseball bat and as he's getting ready to wail on him well next thing you know like the idiot, he knocks over some stuff. The cops hears it and he hightails it on out of there. And so now the bad thing is, is that we have like, you know, Tandy is funny, dude. When she left like the wedding, her and her boyfriend, they took like, you know, um, the wedding car. <laughs> <laughs> talking about just married and they hightailed it on out of there and so when she heads back to the laundry place to get her id and stuff she tells her boyfriend that you know she loves him and she thinks um he's like the kindest dude she ever met and he'll do anything for her but she needs to like just keep her distance from him and she needs to leave town without him because she doesn't want to mess up his life and he tells her you know like i care for you i know you've been sleeping at that like abandoned church and stuff like that and um what is it um he can tell when she's lying like they care for each other a lot but she knows that she's trouble and she doesn't want him to go down you know what i'm saying and so she leaves him she hightails it in the car now at one point I don't know if this episode one or episode two, but at one point, Tyrone is like about to go to sleep in his room again and puts the cloak over him and he teleports again. This time he's in a trunk. Whose trunk? The trunk of the cop car. And inside the cop car is huge bricks of you know what. <laughs> and so when the cop opens it up, cause he's going to make like a deal and everything with this shady person. He throws the coke on like the cop and he hightails it on out of The cop is chasing him down and he's able to get away by teleporting again. He still doesn't know how he's teleporting, but he knows he is. And so it takes him a good while to figure out how to use his powers. And so his mom has like a pistol. And like I said before, I don't know if this is episode one or episode two, but he takes his mom pistol and now he's ready to now finally killed a man who killed his brother because now he knows for a fact it's that cop and everything and see what happened was at some point in time in the episode he the cop like caught with him at some point and he touched his hand now when you touch cloak who is um tyrone you kind of go into this mental void of sadness and darkness and everything now in the show they do something a little different with their powers when tyrone touches somebody he can seize a person's darkest fears and their thing their nightmares and this cop he, and he so he saw the nightmare of this cop from back in the day when he shot his brother talking about how he shot the dude and he's messed up and he's gonna call his uncle to fix everything and that's what his uncle did because when tyrone and his mom um teeny tiny tyrone went to uh, the police station the cops all like oh you know um the cop shot in self-defense and like all this other crap and we and he shows in the video footage of tyrone and um that like you know of him breaking into a car and still in that radio and stuff which is to the dismay of his mother so they covered it up as some type of gang related crap and the cop got away free with it and so tyrone is pissed and he's gonna dish out some justice and so like 
when see it's the opposite for tandy when she touches somebody she sees the person's hopes and desires and everything and so he has the gun and he's getting ready to shoot that cop and then he fires the cop squints his eyes he's scared and he looks down at himself but there's no bullet wound see what happened was when ty pulled the bullet i mean i can't talk when ty pulls the trigger there was like a sheet that was connected to a building behind him a dark one and the wind's blowing and it covered tyrone up which caused him to teleport and when he re-emerges um tandy is driving the car getting out of town and he has no idea what's going on. he still thinks he's in the same area where the cop is at and then when he reappears he fires and the gun fires at tandy driving the car the bullet hits the window she's safe by the way but she swerves out of the way and she drives into like a tree and it ends and everything and you know that was a very dramatic way like here he is getting ready to kill this cop and then like he fires and then like boom you know what i'm saying he's like on the middle of the road and she's like just screaming and everything <laughs> Cause she has no idea how this dude just like appeared out of nowhere and firing a gun at her <laughs> and stuff. And so like, this is a really interesting series. It's like she's like a criminal on the run, and she's a drug user. He's an angry teen who wants to kill like a cop. And so the rest of the series deal with both of them trying to get revenge for the people who murdered their loved ones he wants revenge on the cop and she wants revenge on the company her dad worked at and so they help each other throughout the series trying to achieve that goal now in the comics is different it's a drug dealer who injected them with something gave them their powers and they go and they kill that drug dealer and you know um but this show takes a more interesting route than just a drug dealer injecting them and giving them their powers i like the route that it took and you know it's very small village you know what i'm saying like they reimagined these heroes and gave them a different setting and but sadly no costumes and stuff but unlike smallville every episode you'll get like a really cool thing where he'll use his powers to defeat like a villain from the comics here they don't do that here they only use their powers to learn how to use them and to whatever thing they want to gain and there's like i said there's only one action sequence per season and everything but this is still on hulu it is not on disney plus yet so go check it out but i do like the imagery of how like they told like a story I like how these two characters are like polar opposite, but yet they're not, but they're intertwined in each other's lives because of their powers and stuff. And I like how like when they was younger, they kept like a souvenir from like the other person. Like she still has his hoodie till this day and she wears it like around town and stuff. Like it's just something like she keeps close to her, like to her heart. And same way with like her ballet slipper, I even mean, though he doesn't wear that. <laughs> but she still wears like his hoodie and stuff. And I really like that, like that bond that they have that's really close, like in the comics, you know? Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.